A major announcement promised tomorrow. Governor Gavin Newsom says he will provide details of a tentative plan to begin to slowly reopen the economy while still controlling the spread of coronavirus. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. Here in San Diego County, uh, the confirmed number of cases of COVID-19 stands at 1,847. That includes 43 new cases, while two more deaths have been reported, bringing that total to 47. News 8's Richard Allen has more on additional assistance being offered to small businesses and to college students, as well as more confirmed cases of COVID-19 aboard a local naval ship. Well, that's right. Four more sailors above the USNS Mercy have tested positive for coronavirus, bringing the total to seven crew members aboard the hospital ship in Los Angeles. Now, they are all in isolation off the ship, which is still able to receive patients. In the meantime, some encouraging news today from Governor Gavin Newsom. Tomorrow, yes, we will be laying out California's specific strategy and framework. A strategy developed along with the states of Washington and Oregon to begin preparing for the process of easing restrictions on social distancing and stay-at-home mandates. It's a vexing uh, prospect for every governor across this uh, country, including the president himself, to figure out a way of doing this where we don't invite a second wave. County officials Monday revealed the number of confirmed coronavirus cases among homeless San Diegans. Of the 1,847 reported COVID-19 cases, 13 have been unsheltered San Diegans. Nine of them had been living on the streets, while four of them were in the shelter system. None of them were being housed in the convention center downtown. Two of the 13 positive cases are presently hospitalized, and they will have public health motel rooms available to them uh, when they are released from the hospital. Assistance for small businesses struggling to survive throughout this pandemic is also expanding on the local level. Hard decisions have had to be made. Uh, many folks have had to re-engineer or reimagine how their businesses stayed open. Already more than 9,000 small businesses in the city of San Diego have applied for assistance through the city's $6 million small business relief fund. On Monday, Mayor Faulkner announced more than $300,000 in private donations to kickstart a new partnership to expand that fund and encourage more assistance. And this fund allows anyone who wants to make a donation, big or small, to show their support for our local San Diego small businesses. Also today, Congresswoman Susan Davis announced $137 million in emergency COVID-19 funding for local colleges and universities. Now, $71 million of this will go directly to students in emergency cash assistance grants to pay for food, housing, and other essentials. Back to you. A sailor from the USS Theodore Roosevelt has died of COVID-19 complications. The sailor was taken off the carrier late last month and was admitted to an ICU in Guam. The sailor, whose identity has not been released, is the first active duty member of the U.S. military to die of the virus. Over the weekend, the Navy reported 103 new confirmed cases on the aircraft carrier. That brings the total to at least 550 positive tests with more than 3,600 negative results. In honor of those who have lost their lives to coronavirus, San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner has ordered all flags on city property to fly at half staff. The show of solidarity is meant to honor not just those who've died here in San Diego, but all over the country. More than 23,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. In New York alone, the number of deaths has now surpassed 10,000. Elise Preston has the latest. The grim toll from the coronavirus continues to climb. I've never seen us have an empty spot in the critical care bay, but we try to make sure that we at least have space for one more emergency that comes through our door. Doctors and nurses in the hardest hit areas are still struggling to treat huge numbers of severely ill COVID-19 patients. This is something we've never seen in healthcare to this capacity. COVID-19 has devastated nursing home populations. The Associated Press says more than 3,600 residents in those facilities have died nationwide. But the virus does not always spare young, otherwise healthy people. 27-year-old Jared Lovos died last week after spending 10 days on a ventilator. They kept saying, he's strong, he's young. And then I got a call on Friday saying that his heart stopped and my heart literally stopped. Despite these mounting tragedies, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says progress has been made to flatten the curve. The numbers suggest a plateauing. Whatever those numbers say is a direct result of what we do. I've said if we do something stupid, 
you will see those numbers go right back up tomorrow. Governor Cuomo said he won't consider the coronavirus crisis over until a vaccine for it has been developed and is widely available to the public. Elise Preston, New York. And experts say it's likely to be at least 12 to 18 months before a coronavirus vaccine is tested and ready. A drive through testing site began operating in Cardiff today, offering finger stick antibody testing. The rapid test is supposed to tell you if you've already had COVID-19 and recovered. But the county health department told us the Orange County company running the COVID clinic is using an antibody test developed in China and it is not FDA approved. A positive test might not mean it's positive. A negative test might not mean it's negative. The exact role of this test uh, really needs to be um, taken with a little grain of salt. The pop-up clinic at Miracosta Community College charges $75 for a finger prick test, $125 for a nasal swab. No insurance is accepted. Today in Poway, Palomar health workers protested the announced layoffs of more than 220 caregivers amid the coronavirus crisis. The hospital says it has seen a decline in the number of patients due to the cancellation of elective surgeries and outpatient services to make room for COVID patients. It says the affected positions are support roles. Emergency care and ICU workers are not affected. A local nurse is in New York tonight, stepping out of her mom duties to step onto the front lines of the pandemic. News 8's Lamar Abrams shares her inspiring story. The nurse typically works in the ER here at UCSD Health, but when the virus canceled her family trip, she ended up on the front lines in New York. I'm scared. Anna Wilkinson says she felt scared as she packed for New York. But her latest pictures show an ER nurse whose commitment may be stronger than COVID-19. Hey, I got this. In New York State, more people have died from coronavirus in a single week than on 9-11. With the need so great, Wilkinson responded to an online post from a staffing agency seeking nurses and doctors to come and help. The New York City public hospital system, h, &H uh, was a system that was under stress to begin with. The nurses are taking a bigger load of, um, you know, eight to one for a nurse or even 12 to one, 12 patients to one nurse. Wilkinson is part of a growing wave of nurses bust into area hospitals, working 12 hour overnight shifts for seven days straight. Wilkinson is getting paid, but the financial incentive isn't what motivates her. My motto is um, nobody dies alone. So I'll sit with them <clears throat> and hold their hand. The patients are so contagious that their families can't come say their last goodbyes. My hardest thing is, uh, <laughs> is, you know, I just, they don't see their family. And so we are their family. Even with the intense workload, both the physical and emotional. While I'm trying not to cry. She has a way of cheering up her patients. I do a little, you know, I just kind of bring it in and do a little dance because They'll smile for that. And at the end of a hard day, she takes those smiles to her hotel, which the staffing agency is taking care of. But she's thinking of home, where her husband and two boys are missing her terribly. I talk to them every day. Those hidden notes they stuffed in mom's suitcase, reminding her every day how much she's appreciated, in case she needed a reminder. <laughs> And when she does return to work, this will be the new reality. UCSD Health has begun setting up these surge tents in anticipation of more coronavirus patients. Thanks, Lamore. Tonight, we're sending the love to some of the essential workers that are making a difference in our community. A big thank you to Dr. James Schultz, Chief Medical Officer at Neighborhood Healthcare. We're also sending love to Jennifer Yuri, a member of the Scripps Clinic support team. If you know of a hero, please text us their picture uh, along with their name and what they do that is making a difference. You can send it to 858-571-8888.